Hey everybody, John Trollbus from PolicyViz with another data visualization critique. This one from this uh, December 13 piece from 538 written by Jasmine Matani and Alex Samuels on who the census misses. Uh, obviously, it's a very important question about whether we accurately capture the population in the decennial census. So let's take a pick, uh, uh, peek through here. Uh, we've got an area chart right at the front on the share of uh, the non-white population growing over the course of the last 70 years or so through each of those decennial censuses. We're gonna come back to this because this is the visualization I wanna focus on. But before we do that, let's just take a look at the rest. Um, they actually have some nice screenshots of the original census uh, forms. I'm going to keep going down here. We've got a couple of more. Um, I like this little, uh, what I would consider a Gantt chart of the different racial categories in the census back all the way to the original census in 1790. Um, they do a really nice job of uh, uh, making those changes very clear here. Um, and also notice, just a, a, there's always sometimes the small things. They put the years at the top here uh, in, the, in the chart because I, I think for this sort of chart, um, that sort of, it just feels more natural to me to have the labels for the years at the top. I don't know why, but in this case, um, maybe it's because uh, this this bar over here starting all the way over onto the left. I just want to see that that year there. So I thought that was really nice. Um, we'll keep going down. Another little illustration. Got a picture of the 2020 census form. And then we've got a little table here to lock to, to wrap this up down here. I will say, I think 538 does some of the best table design work out there. It's just always really nice. They're really good at lining up their decimals here, but also adding the, um, the, the units marker right in the top row so it doesn't really clutter up the table. And they usually, if not always, um, add color uh, into, the, into the table itself. So you know exactly what the most important numbers are uh, in, this, in this table because they add those little colors. So, and then we get to the end, we've got a nice, uh, you know, it's a really just nice, also nicely written piece. All right, so let's scroll all the way back up to the top because this is the visualization I wanna focus on. This area chart is showing uh, changes in the uh, non-white population in the United States since 1950. And let's take a look at the yellow segment here, because this is the segment of, of particular, uh, well, of particular interest really from in, in this particular article, but also just more generally coming out of the, the 2020 census, that the number of people who identify as uh, two or more races in the 2020 census has grown considerably since the 2020, since the 2010 census and since the 2000 census. Now, take a look at that yellow area for a second. Got that big uh, increase here, at the end of the period, then 2010 right here, so big increase there, pretty flat between 2000 and 2010, and then a seemingly increase between 1990 and 2000. Well, the issue is here that the census didn't ask this question or didn't have this option in 1990. So there actually was no measured increase in this share of people between these two censuses, right? And that's the that's the challenge of using the census data because we don't actually know what's happening in between. I mean, it's likely, it's possible that that has sort of a, had a linear increase, but we don't really know. Same thing between 2010 and 2020. It appears to be a linear increase. And if we went to some of the other census data, like the American Community Survey, we might be able to figure that out. But from these data, we don't actually know that increase. We don't actually know that it's a linear increase. Now, what happens if we look at this as like a stacked bar chart where we don't have the same issues? Um, I made use the same uh, color palette here. I added the same labels here. I will say that these data, I got these data from the Census Bureau out of like four different reports. It was much harder to get than it should have been. That's a whole discussion for another time. Now here, we don't have that you know, we're not suggesting that the increase between, you know, 2010 and 2020 was, you know, somehow linear or, or whatever. It's just that it increased. It was larger in 2020 than it was in 2010. That all being said, um, I really like this area chart. I mean, it's really pops off the page. It's got a lot of nice ink on it. Um, I really like this. And and I know that uh, the authors of this piece, uh, because I've, I've emailed with them a little bit about this particular critique, um, have th thought hard about this and, and really made uh, a decision about going with the area chart rather than another chart like this uh, stacked uh, column chart like, like I've created here. Again, I don't know if it's the biggest deal in the world for the average 538 reader. Do they, is that what they're thinking? Do they really care? Um, are they really thinking that, oh, you know, there's numbers, there's data in between, uh, in between 2010 and 2020 that let us sort of make this, this increase? 
Probably not. So therefore, it's probably okay. But I just I think uh, for those of us who are you know have similar situations with other data, where maybe we only have data you know for certain years or certain months or certain time periods. Uh, we basically are missing data in between those two periods, those two years, and we need to just be careful and just be thoughtful about what we may or may not be suggesting about the trend for the period that we don't have data. So just something to think about when you are plotting time series data, especially when you're using a line chart or an area chart. Um, again, I like this piece. I think it's really great work. I think 538 in general does great work. Um, and so I'd be curious to hear what you think about this. Uh, leave your comments in the notes below and uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel and check out more of the data viz critiques in this playlist and on other playlists on this YouTube channel. So thanks a lot for tuning in.